Hello, my fellow friends, sets. it's Chris from Shughead Gaming bringing you my review for Until You Fall, developed and produced by Shell Games. Until You Fall was currently available on PC VR headsets, but is now out for PSVR and Quest as of September 29th, 2020. This review will be on all three versions and include gameplay from each. Depending on your region, the game retails for an estimated price of $23. Of course, that depends on your region. Fight, Fall, Rise, and Repeat, a highly celebrated VR roguelite hack and slasher from the guys who made I Expect You to Die makes its debut on Quest and PSVR. With a synthwave soundtrack and environments to go with it, Until You Fall looks awesome. Stay with me as I get my ass kicked a few hundred times to find out if it is. As always guys, if you like this video, please hit that like button. It not only helps out my channel, but VR gaming as a whole. And if you'd like to see more VR content from me, please consider subscribing and for video updates, hit that bell icon. Let's talk graphics. When Shell finally announced that its much-loved game Until You Fall was making its way from PC over to the PSVR and Quest, I took one look at it and thought, yep, this will port very nicely to those two headsets. And port nicely it did. Until You Fall with its simpler procedurally generated levels bathed in an almost pastel neon art style always seemed like a game that had an art style that had been considered for scaling it down. This is by no means a low poly game, but neither is it packed with detailed texture work and demanding lighting techniques. Like Super Hot, Pistol Whip, and even Shell's previous VR title before it, Until You Fall is one of those games that might not be a visual marvel, but with their unique art styles fused with every aspect of the game itself, you simply can't imagine the game any other way. The PSVR and Quest versions do however see a drop in visual quality, with both versions seeing a slight downgrade on the texture detail side of things, with really only the foliage seeing a noticeable drop in quality. Textures may be slightly higher on the PSVR, but the Quest with its higher resolution display is the better looking of the two. In addition, draw distance seems to be slightly reduced here on both the Quest and PSVR, but honestly, until I did a side-by-side -side comparison of all three versions, I wasn't even sure. As such, this never negatively affected the gameplay in any way. Across all versions, your full body render and weapons again look sharp and animate well, matching the game's style perfectly. I would have liked to have seen some other character customization options and the ability to equip armor sets, but with the game still in early access on PC, that might still be coming. Enemy NPC models animate nicely but are limited in their movements, as they look like something ripped out of a Final Fantasy title as they stand at the waiting as you approach, then once triggered, doing a move set and then resting. It may not be the most fluid way to do it, but the design choice works here in this style of game. Enemies all look nice, again, borrowing heavily from the world's established art style. However, like the environments and weapon selection, they lack variety, with the whole visual experience coming off a bit monotonous. As the game is procedurally generated, levels do switch up their color scheme and layout to keep things different for each playthrough, but with only a handful of level segments to mix it up, this can only help so much. Now this being said, the developer has mentioned future additions of new enemies, weapons, and environments, so these criticisms may be less an issue as the development continues. Sound is up next. Until You Fall's sound mix can be summed up perfectly as a 90s arcade soundscape painted with modern synthwave stylings. This is demonstrated no better than the in-game music, with 10 synth-heavy music tracks fused with the frenetic and upbeat energy of 90s arcade titles. For those familiar with the channel, you will know I certainly like my synthwave music, and as such really dug the soundtrack choice here in Until You Fall. I don't think I would ever listen to these songs on their own in a playlist, as they simply sound too arcadey, but they fit the on-screen action perfectly. Voice work is done well, with enemy NPCs not having much in the way of a voice, but instead keeping voice work to a minimum, being used sparingly to move the light plot forward or offer some encouragement as you get your ass handed to you for the 300th time. Finally, sound effects like the soundtrack take a modern style approach to classic sounds of arcade hack and slash games of the past, with attacks, blocks, and counters all coming off larger than life, very stylized, and with a hint of nostalgia. And that brings us to gameplay. Until You Fall is through and through a rogue light game, a live die repeat gameplay loop with procedurally generated levels and enemy layout, along with a compound progress system as the proverbial carrot on the stick is what's on offer here. So if you aren't a fan of this style of punishing but oh so addictive gameplay loop, then this isn't the game for you. Until You Fall is essentially one long run, that if successfully done can be run through in about 30 minutes, culminating with a final boss. 
However, getting powerful and skilled enough to get to this point could easily take you 10 plus hours of trial and error. With a tutorial that basically bleeds right into the game itself, things start off with a bang, arming you with a dagger in one hand and a sword in the other. The gameplay itself feels like a Frankenstein combination of classic hack and slash titles with the you go then I go mentality of turn based RPGs, along with a healthy dose of Dark Souls as you look ahead at the minions you will face and attempt to remember their attack styles. Each run starts you in a staging area, here you will choose from an assortment of melee styled weapons as as you unlock and assign one to each hand. All weapons come with their own fixed stats, traits, player bonuses, and specials. Alternatively, instead of a melee weapon, you can choose to equip a crest that possesses similar stats and abilities as the melee weapons, but typically will focus on a form of magic ability, such as a fireball that pushes enemies backwards, breaking their guard. As you progress further, their upgrades can also be purchased and applied here in the staging area as they are unlocked through gameplay. Pick your difficulty level, and off you go to die. Movement here and until you fall consists of full locomotion in addition to the ability to teleport. Free movement is slow and really only used for jockeying for attack position, as teleportation while being quicker is also a primary attack mechanic that sees you focus on a target and attack with a critical strike. These are limited but recharge quickly and can be buffed through various upgrades to either yourself or your weapons. Progression through levels is, with the exception of a few path choices, a linear path as you move forward through the game's randomly generated levels. Character positioning and type will also vary each playthrough, but like the level design, the amount of any real variation is rather limited, but does get better as you progress further and unlock new enemy types, each with their own abilities and movesets. Progressing through the world brings you to the feet of enemies you must deal with to proceed. Fights may be one-on-one, -on -one, but more often than not will be two or three-on-one -on -one as you multitask your attacks and blocks. Once you're within their vicinity, combat will begin and it's up to one of you to actually engage. Once engaged, you are free to move around, dash in and out of range, or even change targets altogether. The general makeup of fights consists of attacks, blocks, and guard breaks, with you or your enemy being free to attack in real time. However, combat has a definite flow to it, as fights often play out in an almost turn-based style, as one combatant attacks first while the other blocks, then switching it up. From your point of view, attacks coming at you are preceded by colored slash marks in a position for which you must match one of your weapons to successfully block the attack. These can come fast and furious and will vary greatly depending on the enemy type or difficulty setting. These attacks can be countered with an attack instead of a block, but is often a risky maneuver. On the offensive, it is up to you to consider such things as weapon range, timing, dashing, and when to actually attack or when to go on the defensive. Weapons, as I mentioned, have fixed traits, stats, and player bonuses, which must be considered when planning your attacks, as well as each weapon's special ability, for which is assigned a cooldown timer after each use. Player bonuses, traits, and specials can also be buffed in-game when you come to a stage's resting point, which are frequent. Here, you will be offered to choose one of many gifts, which you can assess and equip to buff your character or weapon abilities. With these buffs and your weapon selection, it is here that you can modify your playing style. In addition here, you can also choose to simply take an ether bonus that will be added to the ether you are awarded upon your death and based off your progression that round. Ether is retained beyond deaths and collected and used back at the staging area to purchase weapons and other upgrades. Until You Fall can be played seated or standing with the game slightly modifying a few mechanics to better adapt for seated players. In addition, in a nice move, the game also adjusts the enemy attack styles depending on whether you have 360 tracking capability or a single camera like the PSVR. Those with motion sickness issues Until You Fall should be a pretty comfortable experience as movement is heavily based on teleportation. However, should you need it, there are additional comfort settings such as an optional vignette. Until You Fall requires two motion controllers and tracked well across all three headsets. A moderate to a large amount of room is recommended not only to prevent broken objects but in the case of the PSVR so that you have an angle that can track a wide range of controller movements. As such, the Quest version would likely be my go-to version as its wireless capability simply made playing Until You Fall a much freer experience. And finally that brings us to Fun Factor, my final review. Until You Fall is simply put just fun VR gaming goodness with equal parts style and polish that complements its addictive gameplay loop. It's a ton of fun and will make you feel like a total boss as you grow stronger and get better, owning early leveled characters you had previously fallen against countless times prior. Woo! That's right! Similar VR titles to this bring to mind The Persistence or In Death, and while Until You Fall is a much more linear style of game, it is a refreshing and original take on a classic genre. I hate numbered review scores, and as such, review games on the basis of buy it, burn it, or wait on it. If you aren't a fan, or simply don't have the patience for roguelites or punishing titles in the Souls-like genre, this game may not be your jam. But for the rest of you, Until You Fall is an awesome VR title regardless of headset, and totally worth your money at this price. Not only will you spend a good chunk of time obsessively trying to get further, but it also makes for a great pick-up-and-play game for when you have friends over, or simply need a quick blast of gaming.
Anyways, guys, that's it for me. If you like this video, please hit that like button. And if you'd like to see more VR content from me, please consider subscribing. And for video updates, hit that bell icon. Thanks for stopping by, guys, and I'll catch you on my next video.